I start each morning by coming out to the polycrob, really carefully opening the doors and then propping them open because just inside the polycrob is a wasp nest. I have just been so fascinated with watching them build their structure and zoom in and out of the door. And thus far, fingers crossed, I've not been stung and they haven't shown any aggression. The reason that I'm taking this chance of leaving them here inside the polycrob, it, there's actually two reasons. The first is that wasps are really beneficial insects in that they predate on a lot of garden pests. So they can help take care of things like aphids and some types of caterpillars and other types of pests that go after crops. And it's just a wonderful thing. It's part of the garden ecosystem. So destroying wasps nests is actually a detriment to your veg patch. The other thing is, is that I actually don't really want a wasp nest to be here inside the polycrub in the future. And so the idea is that this year I'm going to allow these wasps to live here. I'm going to watch them. They're actually really interesting to watch. Be very careful. And then at the end of the year, they naturally die out. There are some queens that will overwinter somewhere, probably in the shed, or I've seen them flying around in the house end of last year, but they never go back to the same nest. And in fact, if they see another nest, they'll stay away from it. They won't build another nest, which is why a lot of people will hang up paper bags upside down to kind of emulate the look of a wasp nest. So hopefully this plan works out and I have this beautiful wasp's nest here inside the polycrub, but that it will also deter any future wasps from coming in here and creating a new home. So fingers crossed it all goes well. Now, Josh and I have been very busy with a few different projects in the garden over the past few weeks. So I'm going to show you what we've been doing, what the next steps are, and we'll have a little bit of a tour around the garden. last time that I took you inside the polycrub, we hadn't yet completed this last center bed, but as you can see, it's up and running and filled with plants. Now it took a little bit less of the compost and the soil and vermiculite than the other beds because it's a little bit smaller, but it still was pretty hard work. And then I planted it up almost immediately with plants that I had started off in the greenhouse and in the house. As we can see, Maggie is having her little stroll along the edge. On this far end, I have sweet potatoes and I've never grown them before. They just don't do too well outdoors here, but it's put on a lot of new growth since I've put it into the raised bed. There's two of them, there's another one over there. And I don't know if it'll work or not, but I've planted a few beans around as well to grow up some bamboo here. Further on, down in the bed, I've got cucumbers growing up string here, and it's really easy to do this. You just dig the string into the soil or around the base of the plant, and then just wind the plant up as they grow. And you can do the same for lots of different types of plants, including the tomatoes that I grow as well, which we'll go and have a look at in a second. So we've got cucumbers here, I've also got some aubergines, eggplants, and you can see that they're flowering, so we're gonna get some really good crops, I hope. And then further on down here, there are even more cucumbers, and then a couple of melons. This is a heritage variety type of melon, and they're really happy growing in, in the polycrub. It's nice and warm in here, and I know that I've had a lot of comments about ventilation, but when the doors are open, there's plenty of ventilation. And then if you look really closely along the side here, there's a gap all along the edge and that serves as ventilation as well. So it's, it's working out just as I had imagined having this polycrub and it's just this incredible 
warm space. This is the first bed that we completed and planted up and the plants are a lot larger and they are steadily growing up their strings. I come out each morning, I wind plants around the string that need it. I also nip out these side shoots. This one's a bit bendy, I'll have to come back with some secateurs. And sometimes they do escape me. And then one of these starts getting really big and thick and I have to come in and, and properly cut them out like this one here. But the idea is, is that the main leader will grow up and up and up and up and you reduce those side shoots so that they focus energy into the growth that's going vertically and also into the fruit. If you have too much green and foliage, then it diverts energy to leaves and not to fruit production. So lots of flowers at the moment as well. And I was a little bit wary of the wasp nest. I didn't know if it would deter bees from coming inside, but I have spotted quite a few fruits and so either bees are getting in or they're just being able to be pollinated by the wind whipping through here as well I guess. So so far so good and then down below the different chilies and peppers they're also flowering and starting to produce small fruits you can see one right back there. Now this one I can't remember which one this is oh yes this is one of the padrones and so chances are that these will be quite mild. I think 10% of them are quite spicy. So that's really exciting. And then of course, the lush, beautiful basil. We've been having quite a bit of it recently. Maggie, what are you up to? What are you up to? Huh? You just know when the camera's on, Maggie's the real star. <laughs> I've seen people <laughs> comment that and I'm not gonna deny it. Hey, Maggie, what's up? Hi. Hi. Good girl. This sleeper retaining wall has been another big project. We spent half a week building up this wall, leveling the soil here. Oh my goodness. Big undertaking. Josh did most of the heavy lifting as you can imagine. And the idea here is just to build a wall that's gonna stop erosion from this bank here. The sleepers were not cheap. Wood is not cheap at the moment, but this is going to be something that is really important for the structure of this area. Now, on the far side, hi, hi, Comet. On the far side over here, I'll show you in a second, there's a bit of a gap here. So we've built the wall a little bit farther away from the bank than maybe some people would. So we have a job ahead basically filling it in. The structure of the retaining wall is quite simple. We started with the wooden posts and it's the same wood that we used for the raised beds inside the polycrub. And then we dug holes, cemented them in, and then Josh cut the sleepers and we stacked them behind. And we have different levels depending on how high the bank is in the back. And the important thing I think with the sleeper wall is that these sleepers are completely level. So they're level in that they're not leaning against the post. So they're, all of their weight is going straight down into the ground. And then when eventually there is soil that fills this gap in between, it's not really going to be pushing on the wall. It's just holding it up against erosion rather than holding it up against the force of the slope. Although it looks quite bare at the moment, I have seeded this bank with plenty of wildflower seeds. A lot of them are coming up. There are some weed seeds coming up too, so things like dock and nettle that I've been pulling out manually. And then I've also been planting it up with various types of plants like these foxgloves over here, evening primrose, Echinacea, Yarrow, Aquilegia. They're all struggling at the moment because this is newly turned soil. It's quite dry, it's clay-like, but they are starting to take off. As is the hedge that I planted in the winter, the bare root hedge that Maggie nearly took out. And although they look like sticks with a few leaves on them at the moment, they will fill out. 
and a couple of weeks ago I took a short video of the exact same hedge at the allotment and I planted that a good few years ago so it gives a good idea as to what to expect from this hedge so the plants will get quite big relatively and it will really fill up this space and create a nice wind barrier. Down here in the veg patch, we've been working on putting in this gigantic bed here on the side. This is the 11th bed and it stretches pretty much the length of the entire veg patch bar one bed at the top. And it's just filling in this odd space that we have at the side in between the main veg patch and then the edible hedgerow along the side. And it is no dig just like all of the other beds so literally just clearing the land initially with black plastic and then putting down the wooden frame, cardboard, compost, done. <laughs> and it is incredibly efficient and it just works. And so it's, it really is kind of a no brainer, at least for me. The only downside I would say to it is the amount of compost that you need at least initially. Once you get it started, you only really need to put a little bit of a top dressing on every single year. But to fill up one of these beds takes a lot. And so I've only managed to fill up the top corner of the triangle and I've planted it up with some summer squash, so courgettes, zucchini, and then a uh, pumpkin down here and then a couple more cucumbers. And Essentially, I'm, I think what I'm going to do is as I have compost, I'll just continue filling it. So I might put some black plastic down there in the bottom part just to keep the grass from growing again. And then all of these pathways here, I'm going to be putting down the landscaping fabric and the wood chip. Things are progressing down here. It's starting to look like a real veg patch. And then eventually, as we make or buy compost in, I will fill this bed and it will be hopefully a place where I can put in some cauliflowers and also some, uh, some more pumpkins as well. I've got quite a few on the go in the greenhouse at the moment that are looking a little bit worse for wear because they really should have been planting out, planted out a while ago. And Maggie has been helping with digging, exasperating. And so I think that I'm going to be putting up quite a bit of netting in the next couple of weeks as well because it's getting incredibly annoying, Maggie. The polycrop is where I'm raising crops that need protection, warm weather. So the tomatoes, the aubergines, they enjoy growing in that environment. They will not grow outside here. But temperate types of crops, cabbages, peas, root vegetables, they're all going to be grown down here in the veg patch. And then this area in between, which I've covered in black plastic, I'm doing that to kill off the weeds. This is one of my methods for starting new gardens. And this will eventually be absolutely chaka, so absolutely filled with soft fruit and pollinator friendly flowers. So to draw in those beneficial insects. I bought this just a couple of days ago and Josh built it for me yesterday. So I have a small bench. I don't know if I'll ever use it for sitting, but it's gonna be nice to have the option. The veg patch is coming on. I've been putting in seeds and plants whenever space appears. The lettuce patch is absolutely massive. We have a, a routine, a schedule for different types of meals, evening meals. And so we have one day that's definitely always salad. And uh, I think we need to stretch that into two now. I don't tend to harvest the entire head. I tend to take larger leaves from the outside, which is why there's so many plants here still. And some of them are starting to heart up down here. So I will probably take these out because they'll start bolting soon, I imagine. So lots and lots of greens. I've also snuck in some potatoes here, although I've got loads at the allotment. Broad beans, cabbages are doing much better. I've been pretty good with keeping on top of the slug problem. And then the peas are starting to produce as well. These are the sugar and peas, the sugar snap. And I've been nibbling on them each time I come out to the patch. 
most of the garlic is at the allotments and we will head there for a video in a couple of weeks. But these are the leftovers. I planted them out here and we've got two different types. We've got traditional garlic, which is over here. And then we have elephant garlic on the far side. Now with traditional garlic, I tend to plant it late in the year. So early autumn and then harvest it the next summer. Whereas elephant garlic, let's have a look at it here, plant it in year one, let it grow, remove the scape. So I've been picking the garlic scape off and that tells the plant to direct more of its energy at producing a nice big bulb like this one here. And in the first year, it just is one big bulb. It's kind of oniony. And remember, elephant garlic is more related to leeks than they are to actual garlic. So that's a good visualization of the bulb at the bottom. You leave them in though, you don't take them out first year. You let them grow a second year and then that, that large bulb will divide out into the really big, nice elephant garlic cloves that we all know and love. In last week's video, I gave you a guide on how to keep your container garden healthy. And since then, I've added a new container to the container garden. Well, I new meaning that it's been stacked up and stored in the shed since last year. This is a green stock planter and I've had it seven years and they're available in the US and Canada. Unfortunately, not here. I was able to acquire one because YouTube, but I broke it out because of Maggie, of course. I had a catnip plant growing in a terracotta pot. It was doing fine, relatively speaking, but then Maggie cottoned on to how it's growing and where it's growing. She's just mold the plant. And so <laughs> what I decided to do is to put this back up. So I took it out of storage. It's, it's great for if you move. I literally just emptied it all out, stacked it up. It was fine. Transports so well. Oh gosh, here comes Maggie, speaking of the devil. And then I planted it up with catnip here on the top. Maggie, oi. Yes, you. You've become the reason that I make so many gardening choices these days. Never have I had a cat that causes so much mayhem and destruction. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. I don't want her to see though, because I've planted the catnip up here and I'm hoping that she doesn't discover that it's here because otherwise this thing is gonna come toppling down when she launches herself at it. So the catnip is here at the top. I've left this below empty because I'm going to sow some coriander, some cilantro seeds into this level. And then I've put some random plants that I had just in pots down here. So different types of strawberries that normally you wouldn't really wanna plant them out right now because this is when they're fruiting, but they needed to be someplace and they'll be fine and they'll be, they'll be productive and lovely next year. I've also put in some sage and some Korean mint down there. And then this thing gets nice and lush such a great container and i really wish that they were available here because of so many people having smaller gardening spaces it obviously creates a lot of vertical space and they're easy to water as well you just water from the top and then it trickles down and also green stock sent me one of their handy little trolleys at the bottom i'm not sure if you can see it on the video i hope so because you can spin this around which is great so that you can ensure that your plants get adequate sunlight. But this new one has wheels on the bottom and you can wheel it around as well. This is quite heavy, but if you wanted to move your planter around the patio for whatever reason, you can do it now. So very, very clever. If you wanna learn more about green stock, I'll leave some more information down in the video description. But again, they're only available for people in the US and Canada really good planter though. Let's have a little look at the container garden. I've been taking to leaving this bucket here by the kitchen door so it's really convenient for when I'm preparing food 
and any excess uncooked vegetable matter I pop into the bucket and then I take it down to the compost pile so this is really convenient and then over here we've got lots and lots of containers which you saw in last week's video it's Sunday today so that means it is a liquid feed for them and when you are feeding your containers if they're growing food crops in them you really do need to focus on feeds that are organic and that are safe for vegetables and the easiest way to do that is to make your own feeds using nettles and comfrey manure so many different things everything's looking really good although the apple trees have far too many apples I'm going to have to nip some of them out so when you see like a cluster like this it's better to take one or two off so that the tree can focus on just growing one really good apple rather than three tiny ones. I'm really excited about the idea of growing my carrots in the veggie pod and I know someone who does it so I tried it out this year at least I'm at the germination stage and excellent germination and they're above the height of where carrot root fly would be flying and infecting them with their larva. I do find that with organic compost that you do get mushrooms sometimes and that's usually because of the manure in them. They're harmless so you just pick them off. But you can see the initial two rows of carrots have come up beautifully and then I've put three more rows in and then when this lettuce finishes at the back I'll replace it with even more carrots which will be more like baby carrots it's getting quite late in the season now but this is great really excited about that before we go thank you so much for your support thank you for watching my videos and especially thank you to my patreon supporters Suzanne and Yeti who's in the top tier amazing support you can learn a little bit more about patreon and how you can support the channel down in the video description and also, in a couple of weeks' time, I will be taking you back to the allotment. It has taken a backbench to the works here in the garden, but I have lots of crops that need harvesting, including garlic. So we will be going and doing a little bit of a garlic harvest. And also, I do plan on visiting my bees. If you are interested to learn a little bit more about my bees let me know in the in a comment down below let me know if you'd like to see the bees I don't do as many beekeeping videos as I used to but if you're interested I'll give you a little look to see what's happening with them as well thank you again for watching I'll see you next week for another video here on lovely greens bye for now